Well, I wanted to make a video talking about Desmond Ritter, the new, now potential starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, something that I wasn't sure if it would be the case. I thought maybe they'd go after a quarterback in this year's draft, but no, they decide not to. So again, it's not saying necessarily that he will be the starter week one or even at all next season. They do have Taylor Heineke on the roster still, uh, but you know, I think there's at least a very real chance he's getting some playing time after not getting too much last year. Let's talk about the playing time he got last year and what he did with it. I think this play might be a great example of kind of everything you need to know about Ritter in that uh, you know, first season, really, the good, the bad, you know, every everything, really. Uh, it's going to be a zone coverage play, and you have Drake London trying to get open, uh, sort of in a gap in coverage there. You can see why you'd look here, right? This makes sense. This is a good option to look towards. One, it's a great receiver. Okay, you know, you always want to look in that direction, but also this route on paper could very easily work. The one, you know, downside is you're going up against Marlon Humphrey, not exactly an easy guy to throw against, but still, uh, I see why Ritter is looking in this direction. So, Ritter takes the snap, he runs a play action, and then looks over, and it's not really that open. Again, Marlon Humphrey, very good cover corner, and in the four games that we saw Ritter play, this was what we saw for pretty much I don't want to say all of it, but a good chunk of these plays, guys just weren't getting open consistently, and I'm not going to sit here and say that the Falcons had like a, you know, a garbage, uh, you know, receiving core or anything like that. They don't. They have players who can get open. They just weren't in those specific games is kind of my, uh, what I saw when I went back and watched the tape. Now, Ritter's throw here, you could argue maybe should have been a little bit less far down the field. Maybe he didn't give his receiver a chance. I think that's a fair criticism, for sure. Again, you can be in a bad situation and also not play well. Those are two things that are not mutually exclusive, but it is always worth mentioning just the bad situation aspect of things to begin with, and I definitely thought that there was you know a bit of a, a bad situation uh, thing there. Although, heading over to this play, again, the guy looked like a rookie out there, and I don't know how much you want to blame a rookie quarterback for looking like a rookie. Uh, you know, that's kind of what happens, but there's no denying he made some rookie mistakes. Uh, you know, this play is, I think, a good example of, it's actually a pretty simple read. It's cover zero for the Ravens, so you have a receiver running a deep route. Hey, take a shot. See what happens. That's smart. Give your receiver a chance, because again, cover zero, what that means is you have, you know, the offense has five eligible receivers, so that means there's five defenders playing man coverage and six defenders rushing the quarterback. You only have five offensive linemen, so there's always going to be an uneven number of pass rushers and blockers, because even if you have a tight end or a running back blocking, well, now there's someone playing man coverage who can run in and rush the passer uh, who's supposed to be covering those guys. So you're always going to have one extra rusher, but there's only one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board. So obviously, big plays can happen down the field, and Ritter knows that. As you see, Ritter takes the snap, reads the coverage right away, gets rid of the football right away, and I don't know what was happening here. I just don't. I don't know if there was a communication thing. Uh, the ball was just nowhere close to the you know where the receiver was expecting it to be. Again, sometimes these are communication issues. Part of what you know watching tape makes watching tape difficult uh, is we're not there in the room. Uh, you know we're not in the huddle. We don't know the exact play or what happened there. But at the same time. By that logic, you can never criticize anybody uh, on the NFL field because there's always that possibility. This is just an example of, you know, uh, a misfire by Ritter, whether it's communication or accuracy. Either way, something that he'll have to clean up year two. Although I do have to say, I thought he showed some some examples of him also having pretty good restraint at the NFL level. Um, you know. Something like this, it's a zone coverage play, and the concept is, again, a simple one, which, you know, they're trying to make an effort to make it easy on their young quarterback. Uh, you have two receivers just run deeper routes that go over the middle. These are setup routes. You're trying to get Ravens players to follow them. Then you flip it underneath to your halfback, hopefully just pick up some yards. Again, let's get some layups in here for Desmond Ritter. Makes sense. So Ritter takes the snap. He is going to first look over the middle, which I believe was always just to try to get players out of position. I don't think he was actually trying to throw over the middle, but anyways, finally looks over to his halfback, who's just not open. Uh, this is not, would not be a good throw if he decided to make it. It's good defense by Baltimore. 
you look over there and there are, you know, uh, the other four eligible receivers also not really open right here. So for Ritter, not really a great spot right here. Doesn't know exactly what he should do and is going to do the right thing. Look, he just gets rid of the football. Sometimes in the NFL, the best throws are the ones you don't make. And this is an example of it worth maybe making that throw, you know, okay, listen, could you argue? Yes, you should hit the halfback. Maybe you break a tackle and gain some yards. Okay, some people would argue that, but I think you probably lose a yard is the most likely outcome, and there's always the potential of a turnover or something like that, you know, uh, if the, the route is jumped, uh, which is just probably not worth the potential reward of, you know, a broken tackle and yards that way. In this situation, in other situations it would be, but just, you know, given how close the defender was, uh, I, I would not advise it. And I would also say that, like, listen, uh, a lot of young quarterbacks do not do this. A lot of young quarterbacks do not throw the ball away in these situations. They still try to force the issue. Uh, you know, we all know the quarterbacks that would have still probably thrown the ball down the field uh, on this type of play. Some of them aren't even young, right? So for Ritter, you know, uh, I think good stuff of him knowing which throw not to make. And also, we did see flashes like something like this, where what's going to happen is it is a zone coverage play. So that's the coverage that Ritter is going up against. This is in, you know, final game of the season now. So, you know, he's played four games, has a little bit of his feet under him a little bit, because I, I did think he struggled at times earlier on, but maybe got a little bit better. Uh, you know, again, small sample size regardless. But watch how when he takes the snap, he looks down the field, and again, has highlighted every single eligible receiver on this play. Which one should he throw it to? The answer is really none of them. There is not an open player. And on top of this, pressure is now coming for Ritter. So this is a difficult situation. However, look at that player right there. He's someone who is Drake London, who's going to you know be a smart player on this play. He sees that it's zone coverage and is going to try to just say, hey, the play is not dead yet. Ritter is a mobile quarterback. He can get outside the pocket. Let me keep this play going, and Ritter has the same idea. Watch as Ritter gets outside the pocket. London gets into a, a pocket uh, in between the zones of coverage, and he's able to make the catch, and they actually pick up a decent gain there. That is a playmaking type play. That is a play where that was not being a game manager. That was the play didn't work, and Ritter was able to figure it out. Now, was this happening constantly for Desmond Ritter? No, it wasn't. It wasn't happening constantly, but there were flashes of it. And again, for a rookie quarterback, that's really all you're hoping for is see, can you do good stuff? Can you make these type of things happen? You're not going to do it consistently. Even quarterbacks that had great rookie seasons like a Justin Herbert still showed flashes of having, you know, uh, bad plays as well. It's very rare for someone to come in and just be great right away. In fact, it almost never happens. Typically, all you want out of a rookie quarterback season, uh, you know, within reason, is a quarterback who comes in and plays solidly well uh, and maybe shows some flashes. That's what you're wanting to have happen. I don't think Ritter necessarily played solidly well. I think that the, the situation around him was part of a hindrance on that. He could not consistently get a rhythm going really at all. Uh, and, you know, again, I'm not saying the Falcons have a terrible situation. It's just for whatever reason in those games, it seemingly didn't work out too well. And maybe that was they put handcuffs on the offense and it was just easier to cover. Uh, in fact, that's probably what my guess would be. But as a whole, I thought Ritter, you know, again, he showed flashes. And should he deserve another chance. I mean, I don't think he showed anything that makes me say, oh, you got to give him another year. But I have no issue with if you didn't love any of the quarterbacks uh, enough to trade up and try and grab one of them at number three uh, or even number two, then I think it's probably reasonable to say, you know what, let's just, you know, go, go another year with Ritter. And if it doesn't work out, then maybe we'll draft the quarterback in a good quarterback draft next year, something like that. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.